Amen. Amen. Well, it was May 6, 2000, when Denise and I tied the knot. Remember that, babe? I think they oh. might. Oh. Do they have a picture of that? I, oh, oh! Do you, do you, guys, do you guys like the collar? <laughs> that butterfly collar is hot. Look at that, dude. Man. Actually, I have another photo. Do you want to see it? You don't, you gave him another one? I did. Oh, no. Do you guys have it? Oh, wow. Look at how young he looks, you guys. You know what? When I sent that photo to Adam, he goes, doesn't PT still have that? The, I do. The I still have that beanie. beanie? Yeah. He actually wore it to our staff workout last time he was there. And so I was like, yeah, he, he makes things last. Golly. Isn't that wild? Almost 24 years, same beanie. That's impressive. It's another difference we have. <laughs> It's wild because right six months, only six months before when we got married, we met serving in youth ministry at Calvary Chapel, Fort Lauderdale, and she fell in love with me like right away, like the, <laughs> at first sight. I think it was the traps. I think I was hand cleaning a lot, and uh, <laughs> I brought her in. <laughs> um, but seriously, though, we had just both surrendered our life to Christ in a powerful way. We had been so disconnected from God, doing our own thing, and um, really saw the result of this disconnection. But God in his grace, just what we talked about, in his mercy at just the right time, he saved our souls. And we were so radical for Jesus. I had a mentor who said, hey man, don't be looking for a wife. Just keep on running after God. And as you chase after Jesus, you'll all of a sudden look next to you and there'll be someone else chasing Jesus. And that's how you know that you can be equally yoked in this thing and pursue Jesus the rest of your life. And it was such good, like, and I would just say that to you single folks right now. Again, this is relationship weekend. Don't check out now. Divorce, single, widow, don't check out. There's something here, right? And, and that's a powerful challenge to me. And sure enough, that's what happened. And I looked over, I was like, hey, <laughs> what's up? And it's been wild. It's been a fun ride for the last 24 years. And I remember we she made a video, a VHS tape. Do you guys remember those VHS tape? It was called Companions in Christ. You remember that? And what, what was like the idea behind when you made that? Like, Well, honestly, that was... Uh well, if I'm really honest, I had taken a class on being a wife shortly before that. And first I thought the ladies were crazy. Like, clearly they drank the Kool-Aid, y'all. Like, they believe this stuff. And I had to, like, really wrestle with the Lord to, like, catch up with. Because he knew we were getting married when we were getting married. And that was only just a year before. And I had been in this place of not understanding at all what biblical marriage was, you know, like before Christ. And as I came to know him, God introduced me to some people. And again, it was really hard for me to really embrace the truth of the role. And then as I was willing to embrace it, that came to mind. Like, we're called to be companions forever. And as we submit ourselves to one another out of reverence for Christ, he's gonna empower us to do what he's called each of us to do. And so they should compliment one another. So that's where it came from. It's hilarious when you think back at what we thought before Christ. It's absolutely wild. Yeah, it's, it's so wild to think, and here we are almost 24 years later, and that's been the theme of our journey. It really has been companions in Christ, on a mission, serving Jesus together, trying to help as many people as we can. And it's only by the grace of God, and so grateful. And so today, as we prayed about this installment of Relationship Sunday, we really felt there were two decisions that God uh, gave us the grace to make that has helped us in this journey to stay healthy. By the way, not perfect. Come on now. Some of y'all know me real well, and you're like, yeah, amen, pastor. Not perfect, but has kept us moving in that same direction, running after Jesus together. And so um, you guys wanna know the two decisions that, that uh, we wanna go over. Number one, we decided to believe the creator, not the culture. And, and you're gonna have to make the same decision, right, on how marriage works, how relationships work, how this whole, this idea of life together works. You can either look at the creator and his playbook, or you can look at the culture on social media and what they're telling you about how this, this works. 
and we had to make the same decision. And so we'll talk about that. And number two, we're gonna talk about um, the differences that we have, male and female, in marriage. And we also, and we're working on this even more in empty nesting, this idea, what, what are we gonna do? Are we gonna develop in the differences or are we gonna divide because of the differences? And so these are two decisions that we wanna submit, that we wanna bring before you and just talk about what this looks like in our life, but more importantly, what does the scripture say? Yeah. So you guys ready for that? Yeah. Let's just start with just the idea of the creator. How, how did he set this whole thing up? How do relationships work? Well, we can go back, way back into Genesis. So if you have a Bible, you can, you can turn all the way back, Genesis chapter one, and we're gonna share just a couple of verses out of Genesis because, again, and, and you're a free moral agent, if you're tuning in online, you're here in the auditorium, God loves you enough to give you choice. And so what we're gonna present to you is what the creator says on how relationships work. But we're gonna give you the freedom to make your own decisions, and we're gonna love you exactly the same, regardless of what you choose. I want you to hear that, because we're not the judgmental, got it all figured out people. We are the people that just wanna point you to Jesus and his word, because we know how that, that, that's the way it works the best. And we gotta point each other back to the word quite a bit too. So let's talk about it. Genesis chapter one, this is what he says about, this is when he first created man. Listen to what it says. God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Interesting. Male and female, he created them. Interesting. Then God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. I like that part. <laughs> be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. D-Money, what's the difference, would you say, from your perspective, the difference between this verse, what the creator says, how he made us, and what the culture is trying to teach us right now? Yeah, I, I think it goes really back to the book of Judges, and if anybody knows the theme of the book of Judges, it's everybody did, what, say it with me, what was right, right. in their own sight. Everybody did what was right in their own sight. I don't need a moral standard or a governor. I get to decide what I want, when I want, and how I want it. So this is nothing new, clearly, if it was happening in the book of Judges way back when. Uh, it's, it, for our culture today, they were tempted with the same thing way back then, and God continues to pour out his mercy on us, and today, when we see culture going awry, he has so much opportunity. We, as the church, as the bride of Christ, have so much opportunity to invite people to decide with us to choose God's way instead of what culture is feeding them. So instead of desiring the things that my flesh wants, that I saw my parents do, that I see my friends doing, it's willing to yield to what God's word says and choose what he's inviting us into and watch God do a, a really crazy miracle after miracle. And that really is our story. I mean, we, before we came to Christ, we believed the lie and we just went what we wanted, what felt good to us. I, I liken it to kind of like a vehicle, you know, like I'm gonna go test drive that vehicle, that person, right? And if it, if it smells good inside and works out good, feels right, then I might do, you know, I might be cool. And maybe I might be cool for a year or two, but what happens when the new car smell goes away? And what if, what if you look and you go, wow, there's a different model down there. And that just became kind of how we did life for a while. And yeah, it feels good, but the, the ramifications afterward is wreckage. And so there was this thing that just started stirring. It was God's spirit just saying, there's something better. There's something more that he wants. And this is how he created male and female, yeah. very distinct sexes to come together and to form a team. And that's exactly what he says. Our next verse, Genesis 2.18, look what the Lord's God said. It's not good for the man to be alone. Where are my men at, by the way? Come on, like anybody? Man, I, I know that to be true. And then this is what he says. I will make a helper, and in, in your margin of your Bible, you can write, the word for helper is azer. It's E-Z-E-R, azer. That's what it, how you pronounce it, I think, something like that. I will make a helper who is just right for him. And by the way, you are just right for me, baby. Just, just. Man, um, I'm trying to earn some points here while I'm on stage, y'all. Is that cool? 
later on, man. Ladies, you don't earn points in front of other people, do yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, okay. My bad. All right. Teach me. Teach me. Uh, Where do you earn the points? I, but I, in all honesty, I will say I, I would not be near the man I am today without my helper, my Azer. And it's very, very true. Uh, me left to my own devices at times, I'm a train wreck waiting to happen. If it wasn't for the word of God, the spirit of God, and then yeah. my helper, my helpmate, I, I'm just, I'm not just saying that, but that is absolute truth. And those that know me well know that that's, that's true. This word, ezer, by the way, is used 22 times in the Old Testament, most often describing God being our help in a time of war or battle. So fascinating. Yeah. Can you expound on that a little yeah, bit, please? Yeah, I think it's interesting because the world and culture will tell you, don't do that fundamental Christian thing and serve your spouse. But really, if you look at the, like the meat of what that word means, like you're going to war against the enemy of your spouse's soul. Women, you're called to war. And so what happens is, as an Azar, you're called to be the first line of defense. Now, I, I know that, like, we see men as the strong, valiant, like, gonna protect. Think of that physically, but us spiritually, right? Like, when we see the enemy trying to tempt our husband, we get to go to him in prayer. We get to take up war and the armory that God's given us on behalf of our spouse. And when you see some of those verses in the Old Testament where God is our helper, it's so cool because if you study how God helps man, women, we get to learn how we help men, right? Because it's the same word. And so some of those, do you want, do you want to do this part or do you want no, me I to mean, do it? We can both do it. Yeah. I mean, Exodus 18, listen to what Moses said, the God of my ancestors, 18.4, was my Ezer. He rescued me from the sword of Pharaoh. I got enemies coming after me, man, all the time. And so she gets to intercede as my Azer and keep me, you know, it's like the yeah. sword to fight down Pharaoh at times. Yeah. I'm so grateful for that. And one we didn't put in here, and I'm gonna hit it, is in Proverbs 31, and most of the women in here probably have studied this text, but it says her husband can safely trust her. And so I think of us, Psalm 33, that he may have here, I'm not sure. It says, we put our hope in the Lord, and he is our help and our shield. And when the husband can trust her, with all of the things going on in his life, in his mind, in his heart, he becomes more free with her, more vulnerable, more real, and then she gets to understand even better how to be an even better helper, right? It's so cool. I, I was challenged by that. Earlier in the text in Psalm 33, it's describing how God is our hope and our shield, but it says he made their heart <clears throat> and he understands everything they do. And so when we get to know God, as our helper, he knows our husbands, he made their hearts, and he understands everything they do. So when we don't understand, and we go to our helper, he empowers us to help from his perspective. Does that make sense? So good, so yeah. good. So, so in Genesis, again, the creator, male, female, he brings this woman to the man as the Azer, and together this, this beautiful team. And that's what it says in Genesis 2.24. Look at this. This explains why a man leaves his father and mother, is joined to his wife. And the two are what? They are united one into one. That's God's design, the creator's design, male, female, us together. And now we're like in a war together, moving forward. It's like Team Dachshund. It's like we're running partners, man, like running against the enemy, trying to help as many people as we can on this journey, and that's what it's been for the almost 24 years as we run this journey with Jesus, companions in Christ through thick and thin. So a very quick snapshot of some Old Testament scripture to help you understand biblically to make your decision. Are you going creator or going culture? New Testament, let's, let's bust a right in your Bible and go to Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5, you're gonna see some practical ways how this marriage works. And we're gonna start in verse 18, actually. So if we go to Ephesians 5, 18, Paul's writing to this church in Ephesus, and these last three chapters of this book, he's giving very practical ways to live out this Christian life. And he addresses how this marriage relationship is gonna work. He starts, though, 
with verse 18. It's so good. He says, don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Can I get an amen? Anybody that's been there right there. Instead, I love this. Instead, be filled, be intoxicated with the Holy Spirit. And and now it's beautiful what happens. And so marriage, how it's going to work, it starts there. We are filled. It's like less of Todd, more of God. I got to empty myself. Y'all, anybody know? Like, what do we say when we first wake up? Kill me, fill me, and send me. That's in your marriage, too, in your relationships. And so this is where it starts. Paul's saying, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then in 21, check this out. I don't know if you noticed this. Before he even gets into love and respect, submit, love, respect, he says this. Further submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Well, how do you do that? By being filled with the Spirit. It's the only way that we're gonna be able to do that. And so then he gets to verse 22, and he starts with wives. You guys ready for this? Wives, you ready for your, for your verse, the practical? Here it is. Four wives, verse, verse 22. This means to submit to your husbands as to the Lord. Verse 23. For a husband is the head of his wife, as Christ is the head of the church. He's the savior of the body, the church. As the church submits to Christ, so you wives should submit to your husbands in everything. The money, can you please tell us what God has taught you over the years about this area of scripture? No. (laughs) I will submit. Um, part, I think, honestly, like over the years, it's been a journey to really embrace the truth of this text and want to walk it out. And, and part of me was thinking the last time we were teaching this earlier, I was like, wait a minute, why did you put the wife first? Like, why not the husband first? Because it's like, everybody always says, well, if your husband's loving you the way that Christ loved the church and gave himself for her, it would be easy to submit. But I feel like sometimes we get women in the room, if you're really honest with you and I'm really honest with me, sometimes I get so stubborn and primeful and I have to tell you my thing first and I want you to, I want to finish the conversation. I want to be the last one to speak. I have to get my, a point across. Instead of just shrinking back and submitting and asking the Lord to give me the wisdom to yield so that God can deal with him and allow him what he needs instead of me like yapping in his ear and like pushing him away from maybe what God would have him listen in on with the Lord. And so I was thinking of that last time you were sharing. And I was like, ah, oh, ah, oh, this is weird. And why is it first? Why are we first? Like, why is it? Because usually you'll say, men, you lead the way. But honestly, I think it's intentional, right? Like God's being so specific to us. A lot of times we start the conversation and end the conversation. Ladies, are you with me? And can we really submit the conversation to the Lord first, allow the Father to filter that conversation and wait on God to do a supernatural thing here so that that submission looks a little bit different? Like I could go to the Lord first as I submit my thoughts and my emotions to him. It's gonna look way prettier coming at you. Well, and that's the cool thing too. It's been a journey, right? These 24 years yeah. of you know this love, this respect, this love, this submission. It's and it's been kind of like this journey together, right? Yeah. But I like what you said. Husbands, are you ready? And future husbands, you guys ready? For your verse, it's in 25. Husbands and future husbands, I might add, this means love your wife just as Christ loved the church and he gave up his life for her. I love it. What is the, the word in the Greek is agapeo, and it means to love unconditionally. It doesn't matter if she's in a mood. It doesn't matter like if she hooked up you up with the greatest meal of all time, and she's been served. It doesn't matter. It's not based on her actions, her mood. It's based on the love of the Father pouring through you into her. So, man, just take your finger real quick, okay, and just point to yourself, okay? It starts with me. And I will say that because I've seen personally when I can humble myself, connect with God, asking God, what's her love language in this season? God, give me grace to love her so often, it's just like, we might be in a crazy season of our marriage, but I'm like, God, I need some help. I'm a jerk. I'm prideful. Help me grow. And love starts flowing again. And man, I'm telling you, we go from the crazy cycle to like this energizing cycle and it, and it literally turns around. It's, it's funny. Can I because, stop you for a second? Well, let me just say this real quick. No, no, that was I'm a gonna no. I'm going to give you two quick tips. I'm going to submit. Gonna, she's going to speak into it is men learn her love language Mm. in this season. 
It's funny because I just asked her recently if you're familiar with the love language, there's like five main love languages. I'm like, hey, babe, what, what's your love language in this season? And she goes, all five. <laughs> I was like, man, you're like a Rubik's Cube. I never know how to get you figured out, you know? It's like, one day I need you to hug me. The next day I need you to buy me a pair of shoes. The next day I just need you to just be with me. It's like, man, can you just tell? It's funny because I, I said, and by the way, no, I don't. This is the thing, you guys. If I commit to one, then I don't get the other four. So I'm not committing to one. I'm going to commit to all five. That's so cool. I, I asked her, I said, hey, babe, in the morning, I've been trying to just rub your back and just, you know, love on you. Is that showing you love? She's like, not really. <laughs> and then, I'm like working hard on this. You know, it's like, man, I'm trying to like, like every day you know, for a year, he'll rub my back. I'm like one of those morning guys, let's go, you know? And I'm like, I'm just gonna just rub her back. TMI. I'm sacrificing. She's like, no, nah, not really. She's like, but if you play with my hair and rub my face, then I'll really feel loved. I'm like, thank you for the intel. <laughs> Men, sometimes you just need intel, right? Some of y'all just know already. Some of you guys like me that are thick a bit and you just gotta be able to be humble yourself. Hey, help me help you because I really, and this is not enough. And ladies don't like that. They want you to figure it out. They want you to figure out. And yes, men, we need to figure did it out. Did you hear all those yeses? Just there pause. There's a lot of yeses. Guys, did you catch that? Uh, okay, wait, let me tell you one thing you've been loving me like. You guys, guys, pay attention and girls, humble yourselves. This is so hard for me. I'm like in the middle of arguing. And I want him to entertain the argument and like say something back and like go to the end of it and get to the very end and get it all figured out now at 1 a.m. And he's like, too mature, and he's like, I'm going to bed, babe. Let's pray about it. Pray, sleep. And so I think that that's the best way he's been loving me lately, like just not willing to entertain the enemy's desire for a foothold. So, that's guys, a little tip. More intel right on stage. Thanks, babe. Appreciate that. Uh, one quick little pro tip, too. This has been something I've been doing the last couple of years, um, and there's a couple of devotionals that last year... I bought this little one. And by the way, guys, this is not three hours. It's like 30 seconds. I'm trying to help you all out. But it's something in our rhythm. Every night, I'll read this. I'll get my little reader glasses. And I'll read like this little scripture story. And I'll just pray for one minute, probably. And then the new one we just started was the Love Language Devotional by Gary Chapman. And so I just challenge you guys, man. Pick it up. Get it on Amazon. And just start a nightly rhythm. If you miss a couple nights, don't kill yourself. Get back on. But what it is, is you're taking the initiative to love your wife like Christ loved the Amen. church, gave himself for her, and care for her heart in prayer. And uh, they want you to lead. But many times, I'm like, I'm not Billy Graham. I don't know it all. Just start small and take the initiative. So there's a little pro tip. And then Paul summarizes in verse 33 this chapter Here's what he says. So again, I say, okay, as we're filled with the spirit, again, this is the creator's word for you and I. We still get to decide, culture or creator, but this is the creator's way to help us. Amen. He's boiling it down for us. He knows we're humans. He said, okay, again, I say, each man must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. It's a beautiful thing, right? And as time goes on, you learn one another, you're asking questions, you're growing, and you start feeling God's pleasure in different seasons yeah. throughout that. So, so number one, okay, so that's Old Testament, New Testament snapshot of the creator's way, his manual for how relationships are gonna work. Go study it, make your own decision, and see what ends up happening in your life. So, We've had to make that decision. We continue to have to, to make that decision. And for the last almost 24 years, it's working. God's word works. Amen. Number two, we have differences. And you have a decision, I have a decision. Develop or divide. Here it is, you decide. Develop or divide, you and I decide. And I don't know how different you are as a married couple, but we're different. And I'll just be honest with you, we get different and more different and more different as we get older. And if I'm really super transparent with you, I actually was getting scared. I was like, man, I don't wanna be a statistic. 
that irreconcilable differences idea and you know, we're breaking up because of this. And I'm like, man, are we growing apart? Like, what is this? And it was, I'm, if I'm really honest, it was scary for me. Because, you know, we have a lot of similarities. We're kind of clean freaks, you know, I'm not gonna lie to you. We appreciate that. She's got the house clean. You know, she smells good most of the time, I think, all the time. And uh, we like to work out, eat clean. You know, so there's a lot that we have on the same page, but man, I'm telling you, we're, we're getting more and more different as we go. Can I give you just a couple examples? Just, these are kind of small, but I don't know, small things sometimes can get in divide if you let them, right? Yeah. If you don't give each other space to grow and to be different. Yeah, like when you're doing the everyday things and you're just irritable, right? Like, are we willing to recognize those things? So that's yeah. where we are. So a couple, couple of examples, uh, traveling. So these are just a couple that we've realized in our marriage the last couple of weeks. So been traveling a bit. And so my wife, she, she packs three days before. Uh, I pack one hour before. Where's my man at? Right there. Okay, see? Um, not that one's different or better, but um, it is different, but not one better. I, my, mine's kind of better, but no, it's just joking. How about when we get to the airport? What have we been doing lately? Well, I like to get there a little bit early, and you get through all the security, and you rest for a minute and read for a second, and then you go. <laughs> Raise your hand if that's you, real quick, please. Okay, all right. Okay, Mama, how about me? What, what do yeah, I? Yeah, well, do? he like w- loves to be in TC- TSA security while the plane is closing the doors, and then before he gets to the door that's about closing, he wants to grab something to eat. Like I can't. OC, OC, am I lying? You travel with him all the time. <laughs> he goes, I love it. I Where love it. Like that. Where are my people? Come on, raise your hand. See, like, let's be efficient, man. I don't want to be sitting around at the airport. Let's get it. Let's get it going. It's funny. And then we got home. Our plane was delayed. We got home like at 1:30 in the morning, and we we're so different. I just want to take a shower and go to bed. She's. I. I come out. She's got these wipes, and she's wiping down the suitcase and the wheels to the suitcase. Talking about, honey, can you go store the suitcases? I'm like, no, I want to go to bed, man. What are you? What are you doing? You lost your mind. I do appreciate how clean you are, though. So yes, I will. By the way, I will go <laughs> store the darn suitcase. I mean, and you could go on and on and on. I mean, the temperature. You know, she gets in the car and just cranks the heat. I'm like putting my head out the window trying to get some. Some air, man, I'm like sweating bullets. I'm like, D-Money, what are you doing? Sleep, I mean, she sets the alarm at 3.55 a.m. For me, how many hours of sleep do I need? Whatever time he goes to bed, it's eight hours after that. Every time. Doesn't matter. What We're my eight-hour people. Come on, y'all are gonna, you're gonna live longer, have you know, less stress, all that kind of stuff. How about walking around a new town? How many people, like, when you like to explore, take your time, window shop, kind of mosey on in? Not me. I got a destination, man. I, I'm, I'm zigging and zagging. I'm like a running back, like, just trying to make moves. Was, and like kind of. <laughs> this happened this week, and I was, like, trying to, like, look at things, talk to people. He's got my hand. He's dragging me through the street. And I was like, babe. But, but here's the deal. I, and, you know, there's a lot of little differences like this. But then there's some, man, that are a little bit deeper. Yeah. There's, there's some big mistakes we've made. There's um, preferences and different things that are really, if you don't, if you're not careful, they can really separate you. Yeah. Sin patterns, like generational sin patterns, habits that are just difficult for one another to deal with, and being willing to confront those and bring those to the Lord together, it's just, it's a challenge sometimes, right? Yeah, once again, I was kind of getting scared and you know this whole incompatibility, that I, I was, man, am I gonna be a, a statistic? And it's interesting, they did research on divorce and 43% of all divorces, the reason they state is basic incompatibility. So I looked up the word for inca- incompatibility. This is what it says. The condition of two things being so what? So different, different in nature as to be incapable of coexisting. And God hit me with this phrase, and I hope it helps you, because I really want us to grow and get different perspective on our differences today. Mm -hmm. What if these differences aren't irreconcilable differences, but they're actually intentional differences, actually part of God's design? Amen. What if he's allowing those to grow us, to allow us to develop and not to divide? 
going back to the car illustration, because I'm going to tell you, if we take the bait of the enemy and we go, no, I'm going to go get a new model, it's only amount of time yeah. where that model gets old as well. And now we're on to our third, fourth, and fifth. And, and listen, this is God's best. It's not to shame anyone. It's to help people. What if the differences aren't of the devil, but are of the divine? Amen. Romans 8, 29, Paul writes to the church in Rome. Listen to what he says. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of yeah. his son. Amen. What if marriage is actually one of the best crucibles for discipleship and development? What if he allows some wild circumstances to conform us into the image of Christ? Yeah. Anybody want to just grow and be more like Christ? Yeah. Get married. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You will grow. Yeah. It's interesting. I had an example of that. I had a young woman who just came to the Lord. She's probably like a year and a half in. Tell me, oh, I don't sin anymore. And she was dead serious. We met every week for eight weeks. We were doing a discipleship thing. And we were talking about sin and the discipleship thing. And I was like, just praying and trusting the Lord to bring revelation and it will come. And then she lived with people. <laughs> and she's like, oh, <laughs> I just want to call and let you know God's revealing a lot. Because <laughs> like, as soon as you live with other people, right, you get to see your own flaws. And so she had this like crazy revelation and it's what happens with marriage. We get to see how much God wants to grow us into his image. I love it. Someone say develop or divide. You decide. Jesus talks about this and he really just says the, the idea of following him it really is summed up in die and deny. Look, look what he says in Luke 9, 23. He said to them all, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Can you imagine if we looked at our differences in relationships different, and not just in marriage, at work, at church, in the nation today, what if we just said, you know what, instead of like looking at the differences and right away wanting to divide, what if we just said, you know what, maybe this is Jesus's way of developing me? What if I deny my preference right now? Yeah. What if I get to the airport three hours early right now and develop and deny what I really want and it's gonna allow me to grow in this season? I think it could change really everything. And so let me just give you a couple of last verses. Is this helping anybody? I, I really hope. I, I really hope. We're well, already out of time. Help us grow. Um, Philippians, jot, jot this down. So good when it comes to denying of self and not dividing, but preferring each other. Philippians 2, 4, and 5. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Here's a real practical thing, men, okay? Um, I'm gonna give you a pro tip. Very, very simple. Every time you're out with your wife or your future wife, your future spouse, before, like when you go out to your car after you're out at a restaurant, go to her door, open her door first. What is it? It's, den it's denying self. It's putting others first. Very simple, but it begins a rhythm of thinking of your spouse before your own interests. Very, very simple. And ladies, say thank you. Col <laughs> Colossians 3, we'll end with this one, 12 through 14. Since God chose you to be holy people he loves, if you're Christian, you must clothe yourself with tenderhearted mercy, kindness, and what, what does it say? Humility. Oh, that's so good. Gentleness and patience. Man, that's hard. But then this 13 stuck out to me when it comes to this idea of not allowing the differences to divide, but actually develop. It says, make allowance for each other's faults, differences, preferences, downfalls, fumbles. Make allowance. Give, give each other space. Give, give the benefit of the doubt. Let them grow alongside you. Make allowance for each other's fault and forgive anyone who offends you. There's, some, there's people right here right now, you're stuck in unforgiveness from 15 years ago in a relationship, and listen to what it says. Remember, the Lord forgave you. <laughs> wow. He forgave us so much. 
On that cross, he paid for it. Who are we to hold someone else in bondage, in bitterness? It only is gonna hurt ourselves. Above all, clothe yourself with love. That's why we're love church, baby. Above all, which binds us all together in perfect, what does it say? Perfect harmony. And I just, I, I wrote in my notes, humility creates harmony. And so the differences come and the mistakes are made. We have a choice in that moment, filled with the Holy Spirit. God, give me your patience, give me your grace. I wanna develop, I wanna deny myself, pick up my cross, give the benefit of the doubt, and walk with my spouse in humility. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. So the question we have for you is, are, we, are you okay with that? Are you okay with God growing you? Is that something that you want? You know, as he alluded, as he went over Romans 8, 29, that God's in the business, he's in the business of transforming us. And the question is, will we allow him to do it by hopping up on his workbench, mm. right? And so are you okay and am I okay if God is using our marriages to develop us, right? So if that's you, raise your hand. And if you're not married, any relationship around you, are you willing to let God use the relationships around you to develop you? If that's you, whether it's in marriage or outside, raise your hand. We're gonna actually stand and practice uh, prayer. So what I mean by that is in the moment, because right here you're at church and you just worshiped and your heart's so clean and so pure. Let's stay vertical right now. Your heart's like ready to receive that truth. But in the moment when it's like a hot moment between you and your friend or your coworker or you and your spouse, it's really easy to just want to operate in the flesh. So let's practice what it looks like or should look like in that very moment together. Is that good? Are you with me? Yeah. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm thankful you're in the business of developing me. I hate this situation right now. I submit it to you. I would rather freak out in my flesh but you, God, don't desire that. You want to grow me. You want to change me into your image. And I trust you. This hurts. It's taken a long time. It doesn't feel good at all. But I trust you. You want to grow me. It's not that hard, right? In that moment with that person, we'd rather run, we'd rather do something so different. But if we would just take just that second and genuinely go to the Lord with a prayer that simple, he gives you the great exchange, just like he does for salvation. The great exchange is, I confess all my junk to him, what I truly feel like, anger, frustration, judgment, guilt, shame, fear, insecurity. As I confess that to him, he exchanges it and he gives me his heart. For the person, he gives me, instead of my own perception, he gives me the truth of the actual situation. He shows me when I'm petty and out of control and operating from the flesh, and I get the opportunity to submit my disgusting flesh to him in that moment. And what happens? The kingdom of heaven comes down on earth, and we don't get what culture says, y'all. We get what God wants for these relationships. Amen? Can we do it together? Can we be love church? Can we be the hands and feet of Christ in every relationship this week, this month, this year? Can we see God restore and redeem miraculously? Literally, we sung about miracles and we're believing for miracles. A changed heart, a transformed heart is the greatest miracle. And we get to witness it every week here. But even in those relational woes, we can have a miracle happen. Are you with me? You're gonna pray it? Yeah. Thank you. Love, Love you guys. So good. I love when she leads us in prayer. Can you see why I love having her as my A's at her? Battling in prayer as we run this race together.